India just took another big leap in the global semiconductor race and this fills us with pride. The union cabinet has approved four new chip projects worth 4,594 crore rupees and these aren't cookie cutter fabs. They are actually targeted strategic facilities that fill critical gaps in India's chip ecosystem from material science to advanced packaging. Well, if you're tracking India's semiconductor journey, this is one of those mark the date moments. Yes, you are watching Front Page by AIM TV. Let's break it down. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav revealed the lineup. Odisha, silicon carbide plant, this is a first for India. Silicon carbide isn't your average chip material. It's actually a wide band gap semiconductor used in electric vehicles, aerospace and defense electronics. Why is it important? Well, that's because silicon carbide chips can operate at higher voltages, higher temperatures and with greater efficiency than traditional silicon. This single facility will give India a foothold in EV power and electronics, a market dominated by the United States, Japan and a few European players. How it works? Silicon carbide powder is vaporized at 2400 degrees centigrade, crystallized and sliced into wafers. This precision process is something even seasoned fab street as advanced research and development. The fact that it's being set up in India, well, with research support from IIT Bhuvaneshwar is a huge deal. Also in Odisha, 3D glass packaging plant. Here, we are actually talking 3D chip stacking. Imagine semiconductors built like multi-story buildings instead of flat slabs. This enables faster speeds, lower power consumption and smaller form factors. Perfect for aerospace, radar systems and AI data centers. Global muscle, well, Intel is already invested, with other big names like Lockheed Martin and leading venture funds expected to follow. This is actually the kind of supply chain integration that can put India on the map for defense-grade semiconductor packaging. Now, of course, it's time that we move from the east and switch to the north. Punjab, MOSFET manufacturing plant set up by Continental Device India Private Limited in partnership with a Korean firm. This plant will produce MOSFETs, the tiny but critical switches that control electronic signals in everything from mobile phones to satellites. Currently, India imports most of its MOSFETs. This plant closes a key vulnerability in our electronics supply chain. Let's now move to the southern part of our country, to Andhra Pradesh, where it is proposed to establish an advanced system in package plant run by ASIP Technologies. This unit will produce system in package modules, which integrate multiple chips into a single compact package. This is the technology behind ultra slim smartphones, wearables and high performance computing devices. So basically, before today, India had six approved semiconductor projects with a combined annual capacity of 24 billion chips. These four additions bring more than just volume. They actually bring specialization. From raw materials, which is basically silicon carbide, to packaging, 3D glass, SIP, to device level components, MOSFETs. India is now building an end-to-end -end ecosystem. This is critical because global chip leaders like Taiwan and South Korea didn't actually just start with giant fabs alone. They built the entire supply chain piece by piece. Vaishnav also put today's announcement in context. Electronics manufacturing in India has grown six times in 11 years. Exports grown eight times in the same period. Mobile manufacturing units have exploded from just two in 2014 to over 300 today. And it's also very important for you to know this, that 99.2% phones which are sold in India are made in India. Yeah, 
Mobile phone exports alone are up 127 times, reaching 2 lakh crore rupees. Factually and amazingly, this isn't just policy talk. This is actually a sign that electronics ecosystem is now mature enough to support chip scale manufacturing. These projects aren't happening in isolation. Next month, India will host Semicon India 2025 in New Delhi with Malaysia, Japan, Singapore and South Korea as partners. Why is it pertinent? Semiconductors are not just technology, they are geopolitics. Building plants is one thing. Integrating it into global supply chains is what secures long-term relevance. Karnataka remains a major chip design hub with Bengaluru home to hundreds of global semiconductor research and development centers. But manufacturing plants don't just follow talent, they follow land availability, water access, state subsidies and speed of clearances. In this round, Odisha, Punjab and Andhra Pradesh moved faster on those fronts. This announcement also came with two other major approvals. Lucknow Metro Phase 1B, a 5,801 crore project which will cover 12 stations and is looking at a 5-year completion. Tato 2, hydroelectric project, Arunachal Pradesh, 700 megawatts, a stable green energy source for the Northeast. Together, these point to an infrastructure plus manufacturing plus energy strategy. All pillars needed for a competitive semiconductor sector. Well, with Tata's 91,000 crore Gujarat fab, the Renaissance backed 3NM design centers in Noida and Bengaluru, IISC's Angstrom chip proposal, and now these four new specialized plants. India's chip story is finally moving from aspiration to architecture. The global chip market is projected to hit $1 trillion by 2030. And if India plays this right, we're not just talking about import substitution. We are actually talking about becoming a net chip exporter in high value segments. From the labs of IIT Bhuvaneshwar to the shop floors in Odisha, Punjab and Andhra, the blueprint is clear. India isn't just catching up in semiconductors. We are actually building the future of chips. Let us know what you think in the comments below and how proud this development makes you feel. Well, it's about time for me to say this. This is Front Page by AIM TV. Like, share, subscribe and always remember, think AI, think chips, think AIM and keep chipping away.